So everything that I've shown you so far has been <clears throat> not the most original. Uh, Gary Caps has covered, you know, how to cope crown in the different positions with the different jigs with the coping foot. But the details I'm going to show you now are stuff that I thought up that I'm pretty proud of that has really made these extremely efficient and extremely accurate for me. And I'm going to start with the tape that is used in conjunction with the stop block. It's actually a magnetic tape and uh, that allows it to be calibrated very easily each time. As you can see it, it just plops right back down on that dado and whenever I switch saws it makes it super easy to get that ne next saw dialed in because like here I have a 12 inch fixed saw and then I also use a 12 inch slider whenever I need to do stairs and stuff like that so the the fence is the width is different by a couple inches so all I've got to do is slide this down and calibrate it and it only takes a couple seconds I'm going to try and give you a close-up view and hopefully the camera focuses but all this is is a dado with magnetic tape on the inside of it. I actually have this magnetic tape doubled up because I went too deep on my dado, so I just put an extra layer in. If I did it over again, I wouldn't go that deep on the dado. And then this is just your standard peel and stick. Uh, I think this is Starrett ruler that you'd buy off Amazon. Normally you would peel the back off of it and stick it on something. I just leave the back on and then it'll plop right down on the tape just like that. So then as it, you know, as you can see, it's really easy to pull up and let's just say I needed to calibrate a new saw. You can see I can just pull this down one way or the other and it's really easy to get it dialed in perfect. I'll have links in the description below, but this is the tape. It's a product I found on Amazon. Uh, it comes in a three pack. I think this is the only way you can get it. Um, just as a FYI, it is wider than half inch. Even though it says it's a half inch, I think it's more like 9 16 or 5 8 So keep that in mind if you're doing this and running the dado here. And then just a standard roll of peel and stick tape. So this is what I'm talking about with calibrating it. You guys just watched me slide the tape around so now I need to recalibrate it to the crosshair on my stop block. So what I'm going to do is just drop the saw and I'm not, I need to hit the tooth. I'm not going to do that right now just to speed this up. I know I have a 24 inch piece right here. This is a woodpecker square. So then all I've got to do is take my stop block and slide it down until it touches uh, my 24 inch stop block. So then I look over here and my tape is showing 23 and 3 quarters. So I'm just going to pull my tape off the magnet down here. That way there's not too much friction. And I'm just going to eyeball it and slide my tape down until the crosshair of my stop block is right at 24. I'll stick my tape back in the dado and now that stop block is perfectly calibrated to this saw. I'm going to try and give you a closer view so that you can actually see what I'm talking about here. So this red line is my crosshair. You see 24 is way over here. I'm going to grab the end of my tape and unstick it and I'm going to pull it down until it's right on 24. And now that is calibrated, and I'll just let this flop right back into its slot on the magnet. So now as awesome as the system is to calibrate the stop block, the stop block itself is what is really awesome and what really, really creates a lot of profit and productivity. So this is a, this plastic piece here is a stop block that's made by FastCap. Everything here is something that I custom made. So you have to buy this part from FastCap if you want to use this system. What 
the beauty of this is number one, you get the stop block, but this is a two piece stop block. So I can loosen these knobs and I can offset my stop block. Why would I want to do that? Well, um, primarily for mitered casing and craftsman style casing, you're going to have longer pieces some of the time. So like you'll have a sill and an apron and the sill will overhang the apron. So you can offset this and you can bump your apron to this top part of the stop block. Then you can raise this up just a little bit and bump it to the underside of the stop block for that aspect of it. It's a huge, huge money maker for craftsman style casing. But then on mitered casing, uh, this is extremely productive also. So generally you're gonna take the inside dimension, say on uh, a window that you're gonna picture frame, you're gonna take that inside dimension and you're gonna cut the 45s on both ends and you're gonna reference off that inside dimension. That doesn't allow you to really bump into a stop block well, uh, but this system allows you to. So let's just say I'm using three and a half inch casing, then I'll just set this stop block over seven inches and I have a tape built in on the back side, so it's offset seven inches. So now I can set my crosshairs, let's say my inside dimension is 24, I've got my crosshairs set at 24, I'm going to leave this raised up a little bit and I'm going to cut my 45 on this side. Move this a little bit. I'm going to cut my 45 going this way and then I'm going to slide it over and I'm going to bump that long point in back here to the underside of this stop block and I can cut this 45. And it's an extremely productive way uh, to batch cut a lot of mitered casing. So then I'll give you a closer look. This cut list holder is just an off angle cut with a couple of dominoes in here that kind of offset it a little bit. I'll take this off and give you a closer look. So it's made up of dados with a miter track in here and then there's bolts on the underside of these knobs that allow this to slide back and forth on that track. So then you'll notice that there's a tape on here and that tells me what my offset is. So like if I want to offset it to four inches, I'll just line it up with the four right there, tighten these up. Now I have a four inch offset from this top point down in here. Um, so if that makes any sense, I'll probably have to do another video more in depth on how I actually make these because it's fairly complicated but they were made on the router table. These are pieces of metal that mate to the magnets on the underside of the wings that hold, hold them in place. And that's about it on that. But these are, have been absolutely incredible efficiency boosters for me. I'm trying to think of everything that I'm probably forgetting right now. One of the questions I get asked a lot is about the legs. And this is just a regular material support stand with a hinge I bought from Lowe's. And what I did was I cut off with a porta band, I cut off one of the legs and then put a couple of these metal hose clamps around it to maintain the friction there. But you can still loosen this handle and this will move up and down and give you a, a lot of adjustment. I always just leave it set exactly where it's at and I raise and lower the height with that thing there just by screwing and unscrewing it and that works pretty good for me. So then moving over these brackets on the underside, this holds the 
crown stop up in place. These are these multitoolblade.com brackets that somebody thought up to solve a problem and is selling them. They are a little bit salty. I think they're about 60 bucks a piece, but kind of just is what it is. So here is the domino that is glued in there and that mates into the dominoed slots on the other side of these wings. I'm just going to say now because I know I'll get asked in the comments probably. This is a cauliflower insert. This is a piece of PVC that slides in and out and is replaceable. These are auxiliary fences made by Easy Speedy Fence, I believe. You can Google it. Uh, those are awesome. Great for five and a quarter base. They're not too thick. They work really good. Running a FS Tool SM6300 blade on here. Absolutely fantastic blade. It'll run you about 180 bucks. Worth every penny. Um, and then I did the Bosch dust chute modification on this, which kind of ended up being a mess, but kind of works, kind of doesn't. Um, works better than what was there before, but honestly, half the time anymore, I just let the dust fly. So obviously, have to have the XPS light up here, give you your mark for cutting. And uh, I'll probably have some more videos in the future on calibrating the saw and getting everything um, as far as the fence and the bed nice and flat. So you can look for those. Almost forgot one other feature. You'll also see this tape that's across the front. That is actually stuck on. And what that allows you to do is line something up with the inside edge right here of this track. Uh, say you're doing casing or whatever, and then you can just come over here and mark off of this tape and you don't have to actually pull your tape out of your belt. So I actually don't use this very much, but it does come in handy occasionally. Now I'll show you how this actually comes off the saw and goes back together, just loosen the knobs underneath, slide it off, let your leg come up and hit the magnet, lay this one down here, So I hope uh, you guys have found this video to be helpful and uh, I hope that some of you guys are able to make this. It's been as a production custom carpenter, this, these are just amazing for trimming new homes. Uh, they'll, they'll boost your profits, boost your speed, your efficiency, and they remove a ton of struggle from the job day to day. So uh, just been a, a really great use of my time to make these. So hope it helps. Have a good one.